So how do you test for MTHFR mutation? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to discuss uh, this. Uh, there's basically a few different methodologies to go about testing for this, some with, uh, you know, pr some pros and cons to each of them. Um, all of them, you know, give you some interesting information, so we'll discuss that. Well, also, maybe more importantly, is why you would even uh, look at this to begin with. So maybe uh, there's certain lab values that are off. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you some of the things that make me think someone might have MTHFR mutation, both in terms of lab values and also clinical history and, and symptoms that make me more curious about this and uh, potentially uh, encourage someone to test for this. So if this interests you, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a s statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So how do you test for MTHFR mutation? There are three basic ways that I would sort of categorize testing for MTHFR mutations. And all these are valid ways to do it, uh, and I utilize all of them. Um, but some may be a little bit more reliable, and some may come with some privacy issues, uh, depending on your uh, preferences uh, may steer you in one direction or another. So we'll get into that in a second, but first, uh, why would you test for MTHFR to begin with? Um, it's always nice to know, and there's a few, you know, few uh, different health circumstances uh, that you know, I encourage people to test uh, when these circumstances are present, but you know, whether or not everyone should know their MTHFR status, you know, is, is debatable for sure. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily something that everyone needs to do. Um, you know, if it's inexpensive and, uh, easily accessible for you, you know, maybe worthwhile, but it's, it's not something that should be mandated, uh, by any means. But if you're having certain health issues, uh, then it probably is a good idea. Um, so, Usually, you know, when I'm looking at this uh, in people, you know, they are ha they are coming to me for specific health issues, um, and um, the things in you know lab values that make me think you know there may be an MTHFR problem uh, or MTHFR mutation is uh, unexplained elevated MCV. MCV is called mean corpuscular volume, and it's uh, part of the red blood cell or part of a, a way to look at your red blood cells. Um, it basically tells us about the relative size or volume of the cells. And so when that's uh, always high, this could be uh, a reason uh, having an MTHFR alteration or some other methylation problem uh, could uh, cause the MCV to be elevated. So usually you want to address that with B12 first, um, but uh, in, in some cases, you know, if we know you have MTHFR, that could also explain that. And definitely, you know, the two driving factors for that in most instances have to do with B12 and folate. Um, you could just have a, a relative folate deficiency too, but that's pretty uncommon in this day and age. Um, and so, you know, if it's not B12, most likely there's, there could be an issue with uh, MTHFR. And the other lab value factor that makes me think about this is homocysteine. So unexplained, consistently elevated homocysteine uh, would, you know, also suggest uh, the same two factors. So those are two tests you can sort of look at to see if, you know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, but they're not uh, absolute, so you can have a normal MCV and a normal homocysteine and still have a uh, significant problem with your methylfolate status in your body, meaning you're deficient, and that is stemming from an MTHFR mutation. Um, 
it's probably less rare that that's happening, but it still can happen. Um, and there's some reasons for that that we're not going to dive into here. Um, Symptom-wise, there's other you know p potential uh, things that make me think about this. There are a lot of symptoms that uh, can come about from MTHFR, but the most common um, in terms of the research, what's documented is uh, mental health issues like uh, anxiety and depression, and specifically when there's a lack of response from typical antidepressants and conventional treatments. It's not to say that those are the only uh, ways to, uh, to treat anxiety and depression. There's certainly many other ways and many other reasons for that that have nothing to do with methylation and have nothing to do with antidepressants. But uh, when you've been treated with antidepressants and you don't respond, uh, that could be from a lack of this methylfolate, which is needed to produce some of your neurotransmitters to begin with. And so when the antidepressants are having their effect, they may have less of a pool to actually work with and therefore of neurotransmitters to work, work with, and therefore may elicit a reduced response. And this is uh, pretty well documented as well, um, that uh, some people that are not responding to uh, uh, antidepressants, uh, there's an increased correlation with MTHFR being present. And in that sense too, I would put uh, fatigue in that category too, um, because oftentimes depression can manifest as fatigue. So depression, anxiety, and fatigue. Some neurological things may also warrant a little more interest in MTHFR, like neuropathy um, and things uh, in, uh, related to the nervous system. Okay, so uh, how do you go about testing for MTHFR? Uh, mutation and other problems uh, with uh, genetics and polymorphisms and this kind of thing. So there's three basic methodologies to approach this. There's an indirect way uh, where you uh, take some data that was harvested through an ancestral kit like 23andMe or Ancestry.com. Those are the two that I know of, but there's probably others. Um, those are the ones that I know will work and get give you an MTHFR, give you your status on MTHFR. So basically what you have to do is uh, download the raw data from uh, those, uh, from that vendor, and then upload it to a third party. So there's different ones like um, Genetic Genie, uh, mthfrdoctors.com. Um, there's, yeah, so there's different ones, and I'll put some links in the description for these. Uh, so you can kind of, uh, you know, if you're interested in, you know, different ones will have uh, different SNPs that they check for, but as of, uh, you know, if you have a newer kit as of, I believe it was 2018, uh, or early 2018, if you've done it after that, uh, then, you know, there's much less uh, information uh, on the on that. Uh, but uh, Prior to that, there's there's more information, but they still uh, do give you your MTHFR status regardless. So, um, so in that case, you know, if, if you have a, a later dated one, you know, it doesn't make sense to pay a whole lot more for these more uh, expanded versions because they don't have as much information. Um, but anyways, we'll leave it. you can research that on your own. Uh, so those are the indirect ways, and those ones uh, probably are less uh, accurate than some of the direct uh, methodologies where you're specifically looking for this. Um, as to why they're less accurate, um, I, you know, I don't have the specifics on that. I just uh, know from going to conferences on genetics, uh, there's some question about the accuracy there. Um, and then directly, uh, you can, you know, get a uh, thing through like SonorQuest or uh, SonorQuest, Quest Labs, uh, um, any of the, you know, major uh, laboratory uh, facilities, even in LabCorp and all these will uh, give you your MTHFR status. It's probably a little bit more expensive than if you just test for MTHFR directly through a, uh, like another third party uh, genetic testing. Um, <clears throat> there's kits that have uh, just testing for MTHFR, and there's ones that will test for uh, some other things as well. So I'll put some, again, links to those different things in the description. You know, then there's more expanded types of genetic testing that you can do that uh, gives you uh, your MTHFR and a bunch of other things, and these are usually around $200, $300. Um, these ones, uh, as far as I know, you can't get access to directly. Um, the only way uh, I know of is through going through a doctor or a healthcare provider that has an account. Um, but um, 
Anyways, I'll put a link to the one that I know that you can do this to get a more uh, comprehensive list of your SNPs and things like that. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So you have the indirect assay uh, and then the more direct way. And so the more direct way too, you ha have uh, much more privacy uh, around that too with uh, uh, 23andMe, I know they allow for third parties to like harvest data. I'm not sure what exactly uh, they're doing there, uh, but it's not looking at individual uh, information. But there are there there is some data mining that's going on there. Um, whereas with using LabCorp or SonarQuest, the uh, you know health privacy acts are in place, and same thing with uh, using other uh, third party or uh, other vendors that do direct uh, genetic testing. All right, so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to go about testing for MTHFR mutation and why you would test for it and things like that. If you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions about any of this, uh, leave it in the comment section below and I'll get to those uh, in short time. Uh, again, it, the links to some of these things that I talked about are will be in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.